Hey guys, it's Katie at scrappinkatie.ctmh.com and I have a fun stamping and coloring technique to show you using the July 2020 stamp of the month from our brand new July and August 2020 catalog. Now all of our stamp of the months can be found in the very back of your catalog and they are only $5 with a $50 qualifying purchase. So I'm going to show you how to get the most out of this cute little stamp set. You can see here that I've already used it for the standard size card. And then I've just used that little girl with the bouquet, stamped her up in the four corners, and then colored her with our Spectrum Noir markers. Now these markers are alcohol markers, but this fun technique that I'm going to show you today, that's what makes it possible. So here is a strip of white daisy cardstock. Now our white daisy cardstock is 80 pounds. So you'll need actually something a lot thinner. So I have just pulled one of our card bases from our card and envelope value pack. And I've already inked this bouquet up in the intense black. And that intense black is going to allow me to color these flowers with these alcohol markers without that black bleeding. If you were to use just regular black, um, you would have those colors bleed. So right now I'm going to be working with three colors, pale pink, jade green, and light yellow. And I'll leave all the colors of the markers down below, as well as links where you can go purchase these. Now what I love about these Spectrum Noir markers is all three colors are included in one marker. So one end is light, one end is dark, and then there's a medium color in the middle. So I like to start with the dark and then kind of blend out with the medium. And then on the very edge of these three flowers, I'm going to uh, use the light end of this marker. So I'm going to take the pale pink and there are a few flowers. Again, the light and then the dark is going to be used for the outline of the bottom of the flower as well as the center. Now there are a bunch of leaves that are all the same shape and I'm going to take that jade green marker, just the light end, and just color those in. And for this technique, you do not have to be careful with your coloring. And if you'll stick around to the end of the video to not only see the card, but also the fun technique, you'll see why. So there are a few leaves that are different, and I'm just using the dull green for that. And then I'm going to use our coral for these other little four or five daisies. Now I've started with the light, and then I'm just making a circle with the dark in. I'm going to go ahead and fill in with some more of that light yellow, the darker uh, part of the color. And then I'm using the lavender purple for those three flowers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the center of these flowers with a few other markers. And then she pretty much is done. There's no need to color her body because I am going to cut it off and mainly focus just on the bouquet part of this floral arrangement. So again, I'm just gonna line that up in my cutter and cut it down. Now the finished size to this will end up being three by three. And again, I'm just going to put that in, cut it off at three inches, and then turn it sideways and trim it down just a little bit more. Now, um, keep in mind, again, that this is the lighter or um, not as heavy of a cardstock as our white daisy. And again, I use just a card base for this. If you don't have a card base, just find some other thin paper. Just don't use our white daisy. Our white daisy is 80 pounds. So I'm going to pull out the new mix-in collection. Now this collection de uh, debuted on July 1st. And I'm going to just run through the patterns and the zip strips. Now our mix-in collection is a paper packet designed specifically to be um, paired with the other two paper lines in the July and August 2020 catalog. So we've got Summer Vibes and Timber. So these patterns in this mix-in goes with both of those paper packets, or you can also just use it as standalone. It retails for $6.95, so I always like to buy a couple of packages, that way I can use it as is, or I can pair it with some others.
So I'm taking the smoothie grid paper pattern and I've cut that down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And then on this fern piece, I'm just wanting the zip strip. So I've cut that off and now I am going to um, cut my card base. Now I wanted a top fold card. So I just took white daisy 12 by 12 and I'm trimming that down to four and a quarter by five and a half, uh, four and a quarter by 11. And then I'm going to score at five and a half, and that's going to give me a top fold standard size card. I love top fold cards. It's one of my favorite aside from square cards. And then just to kind of add some dimension to this card front, I am going to rough up the edges. Now you can do this with your fingernails. You can do it with scissors. I happen to have an edge distressor that close to my heart used to sell. So I'm just going to use that and you can see where it's tearing the paper in places, but I think that just kind of adds to, um, to the look of this card. So I'm just going to use tape adhesive and I'm not going to the very edge and you'll see why. I'm going to adhere that down to my card front and then I'm going to kind of rough the edges up. Now you'll see that this card front um, this pattern paper was actually cut to the same size as the card front, but because I distressed those edges, you can see the color of the card base. So this would also work with a colored card base. So where this fun technique comes in is if you flip them over, you can see that the piece that I colored, which was thinner than that 80 pound cardstock, you can see that it kind of gave it a watercolor look. And I just love that look. Um, it happened when I made that card that I showed you at the very beginning of this video, and I thought I would just make a card featuring that technique alone. So right here, I'm taking that zip strip and I'm just mitering these corners, and then I'm going to kind of create a frame. Now the frame that I want is going to be a uh, caddy corner. Also, since my focal piece is three by three, these lengths are actually closer to three and a half. Now I can't get all four sides from that 12 inch zip strip. So we're gonna have to do some finagling. So I'm gonna speed this up here, mainly because I can't really figure out what I want to do. I'm gluing all these corners together, but then I'm gonna end up cutting and making two frames. And then I kind of need to play with the placement on the card front. So I'm going to speed that up um, pretty, pretty fast just so I can kind of make those decisions um, off camera and fast and you can get back to looking how this card is going to end up. So as you can see, I ended up using that smaller square. I'm just applying liquid adhesive and I am going to apply that down to my card base. Now again, it is caddy corner, but when you do this, just make sure that two of the corners are equal distance from the side and then your focal piece is straight on your card front. Now to soften things up a little bit more as well as hide the fact that I don't have four edges to that zip strip, I am using tissue paper. Now, if you're a follower of mine, you know that I love to use tissue paper on my layouts. And so I thought I would try it on my card as well. Now, the thing about tissue paper is you kind of just uh, cut it straight, cut it crooked. You can crump it up. You can have it on one side. You can have it on all sides. Whatever you want to do, there are no rules. And I love that. And how many people just have tons of tissue paper laying around? So I'm just going to glue all these layers together and then remember that you're wanting to glue the colored side of your focal piece. I almost put um, ad uh, adhesive on the pretty side that I wanted to use. And so now I've glued that down and I'm going to decide on the sentiment. Again, keep in mind that all these stamps are coming from a $5 stamp set. How good is that? And I will leave the link down below where you can uh, check out the stamp of the month, as well as doing uh, do your shopping for your $50 in product that will get you this $5 stamp set. So for my sentiment, I'm just inking it up in regular black ink since we are not adding any alcohol markers to the sentiment. And the sentiment says you bring so much happiness into my life. Now this sentiment could, I mean, this card could be used for a thank you, just a general just because. It really can be used for anything. And that's why I chose the sentiment that I did. So I'm just gonna tie a bow with this white ribbon. 
and then kind of trim the edges. Again, this white ribbon also kind of draws your attention away from the fact that that zip strip does not go all around my focal piece. And then for the inside of my card, I did my signature one stamp in the lower right corner with pebble ink, just to kind of add something to the inside of the card without it being overbearing. So here again is a look at that watercolor look that you get by coloring um, one side of that light, um, as in weight, piece of paper or cardstock, and then what you get when you use the back side of that. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, give me a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. As always, I would love to have you subscribe.